Okay, today's video is actually decent enough to be a tutorial, I think. Uh, there's two neckties. So if you want to learn how to make this, just continue watching. And if you want to learn how to make this, go to the timestamp. So um, today my plan is to make this. And I need to start out with a pattern. And I looked for it on Pinterest for don't know how long and I couldn't find it. So what I found was this one. So I'm gonna show you how to kind of find the pattern from this. And I'm gonna start with this one. That's the first layer. This is all draped down. So this fabric, uh, this fabric now here is folded over. So when you unfold it over, it will be somewhere here. So to get that, I actually um, paste this again. But then I couldn't flip the image here, so I will do edit crop crop up this side. That goes over here. Third layer would be this layer. One, two, three, four, this one. So now when you take out the image to the side, that's how you get the pattern. If I'm gonna look at look at this too, I feel like there's one, two, three, four, five layers. So I don't need this one. And then that's my Good luck. So now you see me try to trace out the pattern onto a paper. Luckily the pattern is small so I'm just gonna trace out as big as I can with the iPad. <laughs> I must say it worked out fine. <laughs> the size was the size was good. Decent. Then I proceeded to cut it out and um, folded it and realized that I didn't like it. So now you're seeing me taking a scrap piece of paper and I'm gonna modify the ends of the, the pattern. So it's a wiser choice to pre-fold the pattern to see how it would look like and to see if you want to change anything or not. So that's what I'm doing here. So I had thoughts of adding lace to finish the edge, but the brown lace that I had wasn't the one that I imagined that I had. So I couldn't use that one and I end up just rolling the hem. It looks pretty enough. So now I'm making the bow that's on top. That's this rectangle. I have to say, putting an alligator clip on everything is one of my favorite methods of doing Lolita detachable stuff. I can't imagine putting safety pin behind a bow to be a daily fashion thing. It feels like cosplay to me. Like a brooch is a special occasion thing. But safety pins, long term, they're gonna have rust marks, aren't they? So at this point, the jabo is done, and let's see how it looks like with a blouse. Cute! And here's the reference with the cute little paw and everything. Here is it clipped onto the back of a skirt, and then here is it clipped onto the hair. Useful! Next project, the tie! But in actually closer inspection, maybe this is not called a tie. I'll explain. I threw this in my basket because I had this cosplay, nasty kids tie. And I thought I could get the pattern from this. But this isn't the shape I want. And I saw a YouTube video of how this piece is made. It's 
quite a funky pattern so it's gonna be hard to modify but that's not the point because I did more research and you were my sketch I think what I wanted looks more like an escort yeah but uh yeah and I watched more kids tie tutorials and I think I can figure it out without destroying this but I'll never wear this I'll think about it let's start so immediately when I started, I got a little bit confused because I realized I didn't know how long I want the tie to be. So as always, things go well when I'm not filming. And uh, this is the final pattern that I figured out. So when you first make a tie pattern, what you do, what you draft first is how you want the shape of the tie to be. Okay. Yeah, so how fat you want it to be, how skinny you want it to be. So this is the end product, sort of. And then what you draft next is the, 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 the piece that is going to fold over so, so you don't have any raw edges. So the, what you need to take note about the fold over is that it needs to overlap at the back. So when you uh, finally finish the edge, you just have to fold one of the edges and then sew it to the other edge. And then you have a nicely finished tie. So that's the first thing you have to draft, which is the tie body. Uh, my, what I was stuck on before was the length of the tie because I didn't want to make a real tie that actually goes around your neck. So I didn't know how much length I should do this and that's why this was a mock-up. But it turned out perfect so I didn't have to do another mock-up. This one is like 30cm long. And it's gonna have two pieces that's gonna piece in it from the middle. So, th about 30 cm if you wanna draft your own. Then uh, you need a lining fabric to finish the, the point. So, the lining fabric looks like this. So, um, it needs to be smaller than the actual fabric. So, um, for that, you actually cut the exact same piece like it doesn't matter how high it is because it's just lining you cut this piece out and then you fold it into half and then you measure 1 cm into the fold line and you slice it off and then you piece it back together so this is actually the exact same shape but um, 2 cm's thinner so it's smaller. Ta-da! And um, this is the wearable mock-up that I made. It's um, not in my colour though. But it's full of fishes. So I asked my brother if he wants it. <laughs> yeah, that's the vibe I was going for. My seam for the notches. Right at the side, I think. Oh, where is it? Yeah, it's here. So if you actually want it to to seam nicely, you cut it in the diagonal, but that's that's too much confusion for me to care, so I'm just gonna have it in the straight seam. And uh, I was looking at kids tie tutorial because if you actually want it as a, as a legit escort that you tie all the time, you could just make it one one long really long piece with like a narrow strip, but then I just attached it with a bit of elastic and snaps call it a day which is very similar to the other jabot that I make <laughs> I, like, I like menswear neck thing it's cute so I I already cut the pattern on my fabric and then today I'm just gonna sew it up this is the neck band thing. I think it's a bit too long, but I already finished the edges, so I don't care. And then the print. You know, I think you would have been look you have looked nicer if I decided to go for the the barista. <laughs> but I I like the black cat. I don't think he's as contrasting and as outstanding. And then uh just because I wanted the black cat, the 
the, the table was cut on this height. So I thought I shouldn't change the height, but if I have the barista, he'll be too high. So I cut the orange can for the next one. So when you put them overlapping each other, the height of the table will be the same. <laughs> So what I've done here is that I've already ironed the crease line and now I'm aligning the lining to one side of the, the V and then you can sew the diagonal point and then uh, you pull the lining to the other corner and sew that diagonal point You'll be left with this little bit of excess fabric on the fashion fabric so now you fold your tie into half and you sew up the little corner in the straight line now you can turn the tie inside out and give it a good press I press the crease again and now you can see the preview of the tie so cute make the other side exactly the same and then put them together to finish up the back seam i did a whip stitch but you can do a more invisible stitch like a leather stitch or a hidden stitch but whip stitch is fast and easy the only thing you have to take note is that you don't accidentally stitch to the front of the tie The neck band is actually just a tube of the printed fabric to hide the elastic, it's not actually very necessary. So here I'm actually following this diagram from Pinterest to tie the, the knot. I am very amused at this setup. That's my beautiful wall that's never really featured. And you're literally on an iPhone box that is Velcro mounted to the wall. <laughs> Ta da!